Good afternoon and welcome to another Cat Chat Live. We're glad to have you with us here today. You may recall, but my name is Nancy Stevens, for those of you who don't know me, and I have the pleasure of overseeing UK's parent and family communications effort. We're glad that you made time to join us today to learn a little bit more about how Big Blue Move In will be um, uh, going next month. It'll be here before we know it, which I know brings about all kinds of emotions, both good and maybe a little uncertain. But um, in just a minute, you'll get to meet uh, one of our wonderful partners from UK Housing. But before we turn things over to her, got a couple of housekeeping items for you. So hopefully you're familiar with the Zoom webinar platform. But in case you're not, I'll remind you that we can't see or hear you. Um, and so if you have questions for us, and we hope you do, we'll take those at the end, please use that Zoom Q&A feature. We will take as many questions as we can in the allotted time. We'll spend about an hour together today um, to get through your questions. If you can't join us for that full hour, that is fine. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to our Cat Chat family community after um, we're finished later today. If you have questions that we don't get to today or that you think of after the fact, please do email parents at uky.edu for further assistance. And you'll also likely get information about how to reach out to the housing office about any questions that you have after the fact. When the uh, webinar wraps up today, you'll get a survey asking a few quick questions about your experience today. And we do hope you'll take a moment and give us your feedback because it is very important to us. So I want to um, encourage you to make plans to attend the next few Cat Chat Live webinars. I've got a full series planned with a lot of amazing campus partners. The other one we've got scheduled this week is with UK Dining. It will be on Wednesday at noon Eastern time. And you can see there on the screen the other topics coming up in the next few weeks. Registration for all of these, as well as recordings after the fact, will be there in our Cat Chat family community. Now, speaking of the Cat Chat family community, I want to put a reminder about all of the features that we have in there. Hopefully, you have customized your profile to make sure you're getting the information that most applies to your student and your family. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you join some communities based on, on your student and your interests. Of particular note today, there is an on-campus living community. And so make sure that that is um, something that you have joined in your profile so that any on-campus living news is part of your email newsletter, part of what you see when you log into the portal. Again, you can ask questions um, in the comments for any post. You can um, share comments or, or insights with other families as well. You can see event calendars easily share information with your Wildcat. And certainly if there are other members of your Wildcat support um, system who haven't joined the Cat, Fa Cat Chat family community, they're welcome to do so there too. One thing going on right now in the Cat Chat family community is registration for Family Weekend that just opened here in the last few weeks. And we hope you will make plans to attend. Um, my colleague and friend Nikki Jenkins, our Director of Parent and Family Engagement, has a lot of great activities planned. And more information about all of that is in the Cat Chat family community as well as on the Family Weekend website. So those are all of the um, announcements that I have. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Lisa Williams with the Housing Office. She has a lot of good information for you. She's going to walk you step by step through the housing um, um, and move in process. And again, we'll be monitoring the Q&A and taking your questions um, at the end after she shared all of her great information. Um, and then behind the scenes, we've got some additional support, making sure you get some, some additional information. So I want to thank our colleague, Ashley Reed, for being here as well. So Lisa and Ashley, thanks so much for making time today and for walking our families through the move-in process. Thanks, Nancy. Um, I am so excited to be able to talk to um, our families and community about move-in. Um, so as Nancy shared, my name is Lisa Williams. I serve as the Director of Housing here at the University of Kentucky, um, and part of my role is overseeing our move-in process. So um, this is something that we are proud of. We also know it is a very exciting and sometimes anxiety-inducing experience for our students and families. And so want to kind of walk through the process with you from start to finish. And then as Nancy shared, we'll give you um, plenty of time to ask us any questions you might have. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, 
as many of you know, you've all chose to come to the University of Kentucky. We are very proud of our housing. Um, we have really spent a lot of time transforming our campus as well as our housing. And so we know that that on-campus experience is really important to you. It's really important to your students. And so we have spent a lot of time really thinking through what that experience looks like um, and really making sure that from start, from move in until move out, you're having a good experience um, in some of our state-of-the-art facilities. So let's talk about move-in. Uh, Big Blue Move-In 2024 will be August 18th through the 21st. So um, those are four days for our incoming students to move. Those will all be assisted days. And so we have plenty of volunteers. We have somewhere around 500 volunteers from the UK community who come out to assist with this experience. Um, and so many of you, about over 6,000 of you actually, um, have already selected a move-in appointment, which is great. Um, but all students should select a move-in appointment those move-in appointments are based upon a variety of pieces. So if your student is in a living learning program, they're gonna move in on a specific day. Um, if your student um, is in a specific building, they will likely move in on a specific day. So when you go in to select a move-in appointment, you're gonna see those days that align with your student's information. And so we also limit how many students can move in each day because we don't uh, want to kind of overload our system or overload our volunteers. And so um, we do ask that everyone signs up for a move-in appointment. You will likely, if you have not, you'll be getting a reminder today to sign up for one, um, just so that, again, we can help with traffic flow, we can make it a good experience for everyone. Um, the first appointment of each day will be at 9 a.m. The last appointment of each day will be at 4 p.m. Um, and move-in appointments are typically 30-minute windows. We see from our experience, and as I go through kind of what that unloading process will look like, that is plenty of time for folks to kind of get in and out um, and at least get that move-in process started. So I'm going to go through um, five easy tips for a smoother move-in. Just kind of, again, we've done this um, for quite a few years. Um, I, this is probably my 15th move in, I believe, <laughs> as my a professional. So here are some tips that we're hoping to share with you um, to make it a smoother move in experience for you and your student. So as you're preparing for move in, a couple of things um, in the next month or so, you will be getting a move in packet deliver delivered to your home address. Um, and so that is going to include a bunch of different items. Um, one will be a route information. This year, we're really excited to partner with Waze, uh, which is a directions and GPS um, application that many of you may have on your phone. Um, we have partnered with them to upload all of our move-in maps to Waze. So when you get your move-in packet, you will get um, a specific hall code card with a QR code that you can click on and it'll automatically open up either the Waze app or prompt you to download the Waze app. And that will show you how to get from your current location to the unloading location for your uh, student's residence hall. Um, so that is an option for families uh, and students to use. Again, we're really excited about that. That's going to give you a lot of detail. Um, the traffic flow during move-in looks different than if you've been to UK before. And so that Waze app will tell you what roads are closed and get you from point A to point B. Along in that move-in packet, as I shared, we'll have a hall code card for temporary parking. Um, we ask that you bring these with you at move-in and we'll talk a little bit more about what those look like. And then it's instructions for printing additional parking passes if needed. So we know sometimes folks have multiple cars or a student has a car and a parent has a car. So we'll give you instructions on how to print out multiple parking passes for the move-in experience. One thing we do recommend, if you have a dolly or cart, we encourage you to bring it. Um, we do have a number of carts that will be available during the move out, move in process. Um, but we really encourage folks to bring their own carts if they have them. Um, and then we encourage students who live within three hours of Lexington to maybe only bring the essentials. And so, you know, that first couple of months of school, it is going to be a little bit on the warmer side. Um, and so we encourage them to kind of think through your wardrobe and all of those pieces, um, as well as think through what you truly need to kind of uh, have the living experience you want. So as I shared, when you're driving to campus, you're going to want to make sure you're following your building specific route map and posted signage. Again, that Waze app. Um, is going to be super helpful for you in terms of getting you to your exact unloading zone. Um, we will have traffic controllers 
throughout the move-in process. So as soon as you get to campus, you will start to see um, UKPD, various police departments out, as well as some of our traffic controllers in, out in the streets. They will be there to kind of get you to where you need to go, um, as well as kind of share any information. So they will be looking at that hall code card and saying, okay, ball hall, you're going to move this way. Here's what lane we need you in. Um, and they'll get you to those unloading zones. Um, and so just make sure one, that you're paying attention to signage, um, but also paying attention um, if folks are in the street asking you to kind of roll down your window. They're really just trying to get you to where you need to go um, as quickly as possible. Once you get to the loading area, you will see that we will have tables and carts lined up along the road. Um, essentially, as soon as you pull up, um, we will have volunteers out there available who will be helping you to unload all your belongings onto a provided table or into a provided cart. Um, and so they'll really pull up, they'll kind of activate and help you get unloaded and get everything where they need to go. And then again, that is the point where we, um, are going to ask a couple things, um, we ask that someone, uh, once a vehicle is unloaded, that you move it to a designated parking area. And so um, for North Campus, we have parking available in our Cornerstone Garage. For Central and South Campus, we have parking over at Kroger Field. We will have shuttles going throughout the day to get you from point A to point B. But once your vehicle is unloaded, we will ask you to move your vehicle um, to the designated parking area for your location. And again, we will have um, a QR code for you to screenshot that will get you out to that next location. Um, one thing we do ask is never leave a vehicle unattended in loading zones. Um, we will, on the call code card, you will see that there's a point to put in your cell phone number. We will call you uh, just to kind of be like, hey, we need you to come get your car. And again, we're really just trying to make sure that that traffic flow um, and move in is going as efficiently as possible while also providing a good experience for you all. And then once you are going through the unloading process, your student will actually be going into the residence hall to check in. So typically when you pull up to the unloading zone, um, parents and support persons will help unload. We will send the student inside and get them checked in. So they will go into the front hall. Um, you will need your student ID. If you're using a mobile ID, that will also work. Um, we will scan that. That will start the check-in process. Students will get their keys, um, anything else as well as some additional items. And so at that point, then typically students will come back out, um, get their belongings, and then start to go up uh, and start the move-in process. So um, that is kind of our piece. Student gets the key. Then again, the belongings are starting to be moved in. Um, so depending on how many individuals you have, again, we're going to want someone to remain with that car and move it. Um, and then you all can proceed up to the room to assist uh, the student in getting that pulled together. So just to kind of overview, again, step one, really, um, one of the pieces we do recommend is pack in plastic containers. That's just helpful to kind of see, but also uh, weather in Kentucky in August can vary. Um, and so we do typically, for whatever reason, do have one rainy day during the move-in experience. Um, and so that's just something to kind of keep your belongings safe um, and dry. And again, if you have a dolly or a cart, we really encourage you to bring them. We will have plenty um, this year. We will have a good number of kind of really large blue bins that you can't miss um, that will hopefully help with you getting stuff loaded into those. So we will have carts available, but again, never hurts for you to bring one. Um, the Waze app will provide you with all of your route information, um, but it, you will also have instructions in the move-in packet. Um, we do, again, ask, make sure that hall code card is hanging. So when you get it in the move-in packet, you will see there's a space for it to hang on your rear view mirror. Again, this really just helps our traffic controllers get you to where you need to go sooner, um, but also helps us kind of manage traffic um, once you are in the unloading zone as well and making sure that you're in the correct location. Um, and please arrive during your 30 minute appointment window. So we um, have those 30 minute appointments kind of structured based upon how much assistance we have um, and again, traffic control. And so we really um, ask that you try to aim to be in that 30 minute window. We know things happen, um, but we ask that you really try to focus on getting there. If you're a 9 a.m. appointment, you're there at 9 a.m. and we will be there to assist you making sure that we're just following directions from staff um, and unloading belongings onto one table. And then again, moving that 
car to the designated parking area. Um, and again, we will have shuttles that will go throughout the move-in experience to take you from um, wherever you parked to the residence halls. So I've referenced this a couple of times. This is the hall code card. So you'll see this is the hall code card for Ball Hall. We ask that it is hung on the rear view mirror, if at all possible. And again, please make sure that you're putting your cell phone number there, as well as arrival time and your room number. Um, and that, again, just helps us get a hold of you if there's any questions. Um, and then again, you can see that QR code there will get you to your specific halls, um, ways, location. So that QR code will tell you exactly how to get to Ball Hall from wherever you are. And again, we'll really focus on what has has turned into one-way streets, what is now closed, all of those pieces. So here's the overall move-in map. Um, it looks overwhelming. I promise it is much less overwhelming um, the day of. And again, you're going to get a specific map for your specific hall that your student lives in. So you can see from here, again, where um, certain streets are going to become one-way to help with the unloading process. Um, but you'll also see how to get out to the various parking locations as well. Um, an SBI area, you're going to park over at Kroger Field. Similar with um, Lewis, Donovan, Johnson, and Hagen will also be there. Um, and then North Campus, Blazer, Jewel, Holmes, Roselle, and Boyd, you will be parking in the Cornerstone Garage. Um, and then we also have overflow parking um, next to our education building. This will be what is in your um, move-in packet. We will also have additional copies available online. So once we send the move-in packets, we will also be updating our Wildcat Living website um, where we have specific move-in information. And again, you can see for this, this is John Donovan and Johnson Hall. It is the individual map so that it'll get you to where you need to go. Um, and again, that fuller map is there for your reference, but we're, you're really going to focus on your individual map as well as how to get to parking from there. So some quick reminders, um, again, students who live within three hours of, of Lexington, we're really encouraging you, you to only bring the essentials or kind of whatever you um, need for these first couple months or however long your student is planning to kind of stay once they arrive. Um, watch the weather and dress accordingly. I will probably start watching the weather <laughs> as soon as possible to see. Um, and again, for whatever reason, there's always one day where it rains, typically in the morning. Um, but we encourage you to watch the weather and dress accordingly. We will have plastic sheets available if necessary. So if it does start to rain, we will work to get your belongings covered with plastic sheets. But we also have a lot of great volunteers. Um, last year when it started raining in the middle of move-in, they were really trucking and getting belongings in there as quickly as possible. And so we are working as, as quickly as we can to make sure that everything is taken care of. When you are driving into campus, again, if you've been to campus before, it is going to look different. Um, streets will run differently, one-way traffic kind of throughout campus. So make sure that you're looking for UK PD, um, as well as traffic control personnel and yellow vest. They will get you to where you need to go, but they're also going to be making sure that they're touching base with you. Um, arrive during your 30-minute move-in appointment. And then again, students and guests will be greeted by volunteers. We really take pride in our assisted move-in. Um, we know that this is a stressful experience for many of you. Um, while it is exciting, it's just moving is a lot. Um, and so we really have some great volunteers across campus who come to help and really try to make this as easy of an experience for you all as possible. Um, and then again, we will be talking to you throughout the experience of, hey, here, um, once you're unloaded, here's where we need you to park all of those pieces. Things to know. Um, so as you might imagine, as I kind of talked about traffic and moving to one-way traffic, really make sure that you're watching out for no parking areas. Um, this is primarily after kind of that 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., really after 5 p.m. Um, if you're still on campus, make sure you're paying attention to those no parking zones. Um, Pretty much everything in an unloading zone will be a no parking zone during those four days. And so if for whatever reason, um, someone leaves the car there overnight, um, we would tow that. Um, we really try not to. We actually are pretty good at not having to tow any cars. Um, but you will see no parking areas throughout campus. Just please make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, 
with the weather, we know that oftentimes in August in Kentucky, it does get a little hot. Um, and so we do encourage folks to bring a refillable water bottle. We will have hydration stations at nine locations across campus. Um, and so they will be centrally located where you'll be able to go fill your water bottle um, and get some of that water. Uh, typically, it'll be outside the residence halls or in the unloading zone. So we encourage everyone to bring a refillable bottle. Um, all of our residence halls also have refillable water bottle stations. So once you get into the hall, you'll be able to um, fill up your water bottle there as well. One of the things, um, move-in is kind of the first part of K-Week. We really kind of kick it off. K-Week will start on uh, the evening of August 21st. Um, and so this is the second step in the orientation process. Um, it is a really critical experience for our incoming students. And so all new students are expected to attend. Um, your K-Crew leaders and your RAs will help get you to kind of where you need to go throughout that experience. Um, but that will start that Wednesday, August 21st. Dining plans. I know Nancy mentioned you'll be talking to UK Dining on Wednesday. Um, all dining plans will start on August 18th. So uh, the first day of move-in is the first day the dining plan is activated. Um, and so that will be uh, available for you um, as students and families as well. Uh, this is my what not to bring and what to bring. So this, uh, what to bring is the linen sizes across campus. So one of the pieces, this QR code here also goes to our Wildcat Living website. That really goes over everything that you can bring um, to your residence hall or what we recommend um, you bring. I know um, current students will have a lot of guidance of here's what I should have brought, here's what I didn't bring. Um, but you'll see linen sizes here in terms of twin XL and full XL. All of our room types have memory foam mattresses. Um, it just depends on the size. One thing, some of those big ticket items, so a television um, or other big items, we encourage your student to talk to their roommate or roommates about what they are planning to bring, um, just so that you don't have duplicates of that as well. But again, that QR code and the link down below will give you a full list of um, what to bring with you to campus or what we recommend that you bring to you with you to campus. And then we do have a list of things of what not to bring. Um, and so all of these items pose um, either a fire safety or life safety hazard um, and are not permitted in the residence halls. Um, so some of these are kind of obvious ones. Candles are not allowed. Um, we do not want an open flame in the residence halls. Some um, are less obvious. So one of the pieces that we uh, typically see each move in is air fryers. Air fryers are not allowed in the residence halls. Um, and so that is something um, I believe Jewel Hall one year had like 50 air fryers during move-in that they had to say, please do not bring these in. So um, that has been a, a popular item. Another one that folks have a lot of questions about are headboards. Headboards are not allowed um, from a fire safety uh, risk. Uh, and so that is something to pay attention to as well. Electric scooters or hoverboards, um, pets, unless it is an approved animal or an emotional support animal. Um, but again, you'll see all of this on our what not to bring that is on our wildcat living page. Um, the other piece I like to kind of point out is those LED light strips. Um, inevitably, when you try to take them down at move-in, it also takes down a good portion of our paint and drywall. Uh, and so that is something that we also recommend students do not bring. They're very cute uh, and they make, they create a cozy environment, but they do cause some damage. Um, so again, all of this is on our website if you have any questions. Um, and we do our best during move-in to catch any um, prohibited items and make sure that they go back out to that car as we are unloading. One thing that is nice about the University of Kentucky, you do not need a fridge. Uh, we will have a micro fridge in um, all of the residence halls and all of the rooms. And so this is a combined fridge, freezer, and microwave. Um, if you're in a variety of buildings, so if you're in a four bedroom suite, a two bedroom deluxe suite, or university flats, um, we have full size refrigerators and microwaves in those spaces as well. But all students will have um, a micro fridge. Any additional micro fridge, any additional fridges are not permitted unless you have been approved um, by a university office. So that is something when you move in, if we see an additional fridge, we may ask some questions about that um, and just make sure that it has been approved. One thing during the move-in period, we um, typically allow 24-7 visitation in our residence halls. During the move-in period, we do lock that down a little bit just to kind of make sure um, 
one, that your student is getting settled. Um, there will be a lot of things happening during the evening hours, whether it's RAs reaching out to them to kind of get to know them, as well as if they're in an LLP, there will be programming in the evenings. And so no visitation is allowed uh, that Sunday, August 18th through Wednesday, August 21st. Um, families may remain in the residence halls to assist students until 8 p.m. on each move-in day. Um, and again, that is because we're really trying to find ways to get your student engaged in the community and really start that um, with some programming and some one-on-one -on -one conversations and making sure that they're getting settled. Um, that 8 p.m., it is not, we're not coming in to kick you out. It is just kind of making sure that your student is able to get connected and settled. We will begin our regular visitation on August 21st at noon. So at that point, we will begin our 24-7 visitation within the residence halls. Another piece. Um, so we go through a pretty... Um, large process of checking that all of the rooms are ready prior to your arrival. So we will make sure that everything is cleaned. We will make sure that everything is in working order. Um, if you run into anything when you move in, um, we do have a fix it 24 seven call center. Um, and so our maintenance staff uh, across campus handles most repairs uh, and works with our university's facilities management teams. Um, and so all non-emergency -emergen maintenance requests are handled Monday through Friday during regular, regular business hours. But we also have maintenance personnel on call 24 7 365 um, in case there's an emergency situation. And so that fix it call center is open 24 7 as well for your students. Um, we do have a custodial staff within our residence halls. They are there to clean and disinfect, disinfect the residence hall common areas. Um, and they work during the day with a reduced workforce on the weekends. So um, you will see custodians around there to assist you. Um, if you have any issues in your room, if there's something that you um, that is broken or something that needs attention, we're always here to help. So again, you can submit a request um, on our website on our fix it form, um, but you can also always call the fix it 24 seven call center in case there's an issue. And that's another thing we find a lot of our students will go to their RAs first and say, hey, I'm having this issue um, and they will get you to where you need to go. Um, but someone is always available 24 seven 365, um, both from a staff within residence life, but also fix it 24 seven call center. So I ran through that uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, but I say again, and we wanted to save a good number, um, good amount of time for any questions that you all have. So Nancy, I'll turn it back over to you uh, to kind of guide us through the questions. All right. Yep. Thank you, Lisa, for going through all of those slides and providing an overview of the process. We do have a lot of questions that have come in as you've been talking. And so we'll take as many of those as we possibly can. But we'll start um, back at the beginning when you were talking about move-in appointments. So we've got an out-of-state family. Um, they, because of the distance, I'm assuming it would be easier for them to work, uh, move in on a weekend. They're hoping they can maybe change and have sent a request. If folks need to adjust their move-in appointment, what options do they have? Yeah, if students um, and families need to move, change their move-in appointments, um, there's a couple of different options. There is the move-in exception request. Um, so similar to where your student uh, selected their move-in appointment, there is a link to a move-in request, move-in exception request form. Um, so you can do that. You can also just email UK Housing at uky.edu um, and share the information. And we will we have a group who are reviewing those move-in exception requests on a daily basis. And so we try to get back to you within um, a week, but oftentimes we're getting back to you within a couple of days. So if you can email either ukhousing at uky.edu or have your student go back to their My Forms on the housing portal where they selected their move-in appointment and they can complete that exception request form. All right. Um, speaking of distance, this is even uh, farther than out of state. The question is, do our international students need to select a move-in appointment? They do not. So international students do not select a move-in appointment. Our colleagues in the International Center um, are going to be reaching out to you about when they need international students to arrive. And we work directly with international students in the International Center to make sure that your rooms are ready for you um, when you arrive. So we do not ask um, international students to complete a move-in appointment because you're going to have a very specific date that you need to be moved in by. All right. So our next question is, they know when their move-in appointment is or the student's move-in appointment is, but they're trying to decide how much time they should allow to like kind of get in the line. So um, trying to figure out how traffic flow is working. If they're staying in a hotel that's about 10 minutes away, like 
what time should they leave the hotel to arrive for their movement appointment? I see, I have seen questions like this over the years um, in Facebook groups and so on. Yeah, trying to figure out when to start the process prior to the movement appointment. I would say probably, and Nancy, I mean, you have seen this question come up. I would say 30 to 45 minutes. Um, once you get into the line, it's actually pretty quick because we're moving you as quickly as possible. Um, it's kind of like air traffic control a little bit in the mornings. It's a little bit quicker than it gets, um, in the afternoons just because things might get backed up. So, um, I would say 30 to 45 minutes. Again, campus is really, we try to limit all campus traffic to just move in related traffic as much as possible. Um, and so that is something to pay attention to. Um, I will say if we also things to consider is uh, I believe Fayette County Schools will be back in session when we're moving in. So that will create a little bit more traffic in the mornings as well. Um, but I would suggest 30 to 45 minutes. Um, but I would also throw it into the Waze app and it's going to tell you how long it's going to take you as well. So that is another kind of perk of them being able to let you know, oh, it's going to take a little bit longer. Yeah, I think that Waze app um, is going to be a, a good collaboration and helpful for folks as they're making plans. Got a, a question asking if elevators are available in all of the halls for move in. Elevators are available in all of our residence halls. Um, we, yes, we will have staff who are managing those elevators, um, but they will be available throughout move in. Um, we have multiple elevators um, in many of our residence halls. Um, and so that hopefully will continue to run smoothly. Um, and again, we'll have staff there who are actually operating the elevators throughout the day, uh, which makes the process move pretty quickly. All right, great. So as soon as you mentioned that students would need um, their ID card when they check in at the residence halls, got a lot of questions about IDs. And so I've put the wildcard ID office in the chat for folks. Um, you all, all may know a little bit more um, than I do at this point. At this point, I know that our, our friends in the wildcard ID office are transitioning to mobile IDs and there's going uh, to be more information sending um, going out to students about that. But the question that came in um, that I wanted to, to see if you had any additional information about is, if we arrive for move-in on Saturday, but the ID office is normally open Monday through Friday, how will students get their IDs? Are they going to have Saturday hours for move-in? If they, if students get a printed ID and they have not picked it up yet, those will actually be at the residence hall when they check in. Um, so we work with the wildcard ID office for any printed IDs um, that have not been picked up. They move, they basically give them to us prior to move in. And so they will be there um, when you check in. If for whatever reason they are not there, we will work with you to set up a temp ID um, and get you to where you need to go. We are really encouraging um, students to use the mobile ID. Um, it is just, it is super helpful. It will work on their front door. It will work for all access needs and housing as well. So we encourage them to do that. But if they did get a printed ID that they have not picked up yet, those will be in the residence halls for them when they check in. This may not be a question that you know the answer to because um, the, the wildcard ID office may be the experts here, but it, the question just came in and said, mobile IDs are not accepted everywhere. Is that correct? That's why we're getting a, I guess, the physical ID. That will be a, a good question for the wildcard ID office. From a housing perspective, we do um, our setup to accept the mobile ID at all of our locations. So at our front desks, we will, for this academic year, be ready to accept those. Um, and again, your students' access to the residence halls are also um, available through the mobile ID as well. Our next question is, do we know what time K-Week starts on the 21st? I have not seen an exact time, at least I don't know if you have, but it typically starts after dinner that night. It does. So traditionally, one of the pieces, and I know, I believe Justin Blevins, who is our Director of Residence Life, will be coming in a couple weeks to talk about life in the halls. Um, typically that evening, the RAs will do a community meeting. Um, usually that's around 7 p.m., 8 p.m. 7 30 p.m. It has changed uh, kind of year to year. Um, but typically there will be a community meeting um, after dinner time and then they will escort them to the first K-Week event from there. So definitely after dinner. Um, but I also, uh, we can double check and get that information to you on when that first event is going to be. Yep. And we'll do a cat chat live about K-Week on August 5th. And we'll have more information about K-Week as we get it from our colleagues in the Office of Student Organizations and Activities. So I suspect um, that this next question is is similar to the one about K-Week. Are students allowed to have a last meal with their families in the dining hall on move-in day, or do families need to eat at a place that accepts payment? So this kind of 
uh, related to both both the housing side and the dining side? Um, dining will um, accept payment. So you're able to have a last meal in the dining hall. Um, your student also will have guest passes on their dining meal plan. And so if they wish to use those, they can do that as well. Um, but yes, our dining locations will be open avail and available for students and families. All right, so now we've got a series of questions when you started talking about what to bring and what not to bring. So here are some more um, specific questions about that. Are there any limitations on rice cookers? I believe so. I'm going to have to double check that one. Yes, I do think that rice cookers are not allowed. It is, again, a similar heating element issue, um, but we will get that added to the website. But rice cookers are not allowed. All right. Yeah, uh, just ask us to kind of put on our temporary like fire marshal hat here. Okay, so got a couple questions on um, what amount of wall coverings are considered excessive. So this again is a, maybe where we would defer to our our colleagues in the fire marshal's office. Yeah, one of the pieces um, the Commonwealth of Kentucky has pretty strict fire safety laws in the residence halls, uh, more so than potentially other states. Um, and so it is 10% of the hall or of the wall cannot be covered, no more than 10%. Um, that is kind of a, a guidance. Even the fire marshal will tell you it is really just kind of eyeballing it. We're not going to say, okay, your wall is 12 feet, so only 10% of 12 feet. Um, but again, it's it's really kind of eyeballing that, but it is 10% of the wall can, um, can be covered. So 90% needs to be left uncovered. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to argue when we're doing things for, for life safety yeah. purposes. So yeah. we know that students want, um, you know, to make their spaces their own and we want them to do that as well, but not, not the expense of life safety for sure. All right. Um, do you know if desktop face product fridges are permitted or if that falls under the, the uh, you know, the caveat of a, a second fridge? I love this question. Skincare is important. Uh, yes, those are allowed. Those smaller refrigerators that are kind of very small um, for that is allowed um, in the residence halls. All right. I believe I know the answer to this question, but I, just to double check in case I'm wrong, the microwave and the fridge are bolted together, right? It is a single unit micro fridge? Correct. Correct. They are bolted together. Okay. Are there any recommendations for how to hang things in the residence halls to, to cause the least damage possible? That's a great question. So we really recommend um, command strips um, and utilizing those. So we see a lot of students will utilize command strips. Small nails are also okay. Um, we know at move out that those will be available, but we really uh, recommend the command strips. Um, this is more so talking about move out. Also, we recommend when students move out, just take, don't, take the command strips down. It is much easier for our teams to do that and limits the damage. So we re really recommend um, command strips as well as very small nails are allowed. All right, so a couple of questions about um, an acknowledgement that no lofting of the beds is allowed, but they're asking if small risers are okay. Small risers are okay. Um, so those small black pieces, um, you will see that many of our beds when you come in um, are already taller. Um, so if you have a dresser, typically the dressers um, that we provide in the residence halls can fit underneath the bed. So many of our beds are already um, lofted quite a bit uh, for things to go underneath them. But risers are allowed, um, but we just are unable to loft them. All right. So, so trying to quickly scroll through our questions. <laughs> We've answered a lot, but we still have a lot left. And that, that is great. So we've got a couple of questions about how laundry is going to work in the residence halls this year about, um, you know, hearing rumors that it's free and questions about are there laundry facilities on each floor and how they would figure out where laundry facilities are. Um, this is the best kept, not secret, secret, uh, free. We will be moving to free laundry for this academic year. Um, and so we're very excited about that. Um, so when students arrive in August, um, all of our machines will be free laundry. Um, regarding the question around where laundry rooms are located, there is not necessarily one laundry room on each floor. Um, typically, it'll be either on the first floor or it might be alternating floors. Um, what I recommend is when you get there on move-in day, maybe just do a quick tour of the building um, 
and though RAs will also be able to tell you where the nearest laundry rooms are as well. Um, so we have spaced them out so that they're convenient for students um, kind of across the residence halls. But again, we will be moving to free laundry uh, for the 24-25 academic year, which we're really excited about. More information will be coming out to that to students about that. And I believe it'll be coming in a countdown to Kentucky here soon as well. Yeah, when um, I was in one of the orientation sessions where the free laundry was announced, there were cheers. And then I will admit that a few of our first year experience ambassadors who have since moved out of the residence halls were not quite as gleeful because they were sorry it wasn't an option when they were here. But I was like, listen, y'all, you know, UK is constantly improving and and making changes, so they shouldn't be surprised either. <laughs> I, and I will say that is one, uh, that was a big point of feedback. We do a survey every year of all of our residence halls and our residential students. That was one of the big pieces of feedback um, that students have been providing for us. And so it was based upon student feedback that we made this decision to move to free laundry. Um, so again, I think it's another good example of please share your feedback because we are continuously trying to make improvements for students um, and for the student experience. Yeah, for sure. I know students get a lot of surveys. We send a lot of surveys to families, but we do really look at all of the feedback that we get and do what we can to improve things year to year. So you recommended that when they get there a move-in day that maybe they do a little tour of the building as they're trying to figure out where things like laundry are. I'm assuming that's also the case for ice machines. Are there ice machines in each building? Um, there are ice machines in each building. Again, that's going to vary in terms of where uh, those ice machines are. Um, some are every other floor. They're typically with the kitchens. Um, so we also have kitchens in every residence hall. Um, and so that will be a piece where take a look. And again, your RAs are going to know all of this like the back of their hand. So I think as soon as you're able to kind of connect with the RA, um, they'll be able to tell you where the nearest laundry room is, where the nearest kitchen is, and all of those pieces as well. So I've seen a couple of questions asking how many vehicles um, folks are allowed to bring for move in. Um, you know, again, student may have their own car. There may be a family vehicle or two, but there are a limit to the number of vehicles they can bring. There is not a limit to the number of vehicles um, you can bring. Again, you're just going to want to make sure that you have enough temporary parking passes for each vehicle's vehicle. If your student is keeping their vehicle with them, they'll want to make sure that they have their UK parking pass. And again, I think UK Transportation Services is coming in a, maybe next week to kind of chat with you all. So if it's a student vehicle, they're going to want to make sure that they have um, their parking pass. But again, um, temporary parking passes, just make sure that you have enough and make sure again, that as you're going through the move in process and unloading that we're moving all of those vehicles um, as soon as possible. And again, we will work with you to kind of make sure that that's happening within that 30 minute window. So what if they have two cars and only two people for move in? Um, you know, obviously they'll need to move their cars out of their, their curbside spot, the unloading zone. Mm -hmm. um, but then if somebody needs to stay with their belongings, how do they handle that? Yeah, that will be something where we'll probably get one car out. Um, typically, this will happen if a, a parent and a student are moving in. So we might have that student, once they get everything up into the room, um, then we'll have them go and move the car. And again, unloading to kind of unloading outside to unloading in the room, it's typically within 30 minutes. Um, and so we'll work with you. Um, we'll at, at least ask one of those cars to move. Um, and then we'll work with the student to kind of get them moved whenever their belongings are in their room. So it, for the unloading and getting things up to the room process, do they need to label all of the boxes and containers that they're bringing in? I think that's a great idea. If you um, can, I think that is super helpful for the volunteers. Um, again, the student or someone will typically with the BB will be with the belongings at all time. But I think if you can put um, Williams Ball 323 on it, I think that certainly helps us make sure um, that it is getting to the correct place. Um, and it's also just helpful for everyone involved. So I we I will probably add that to my tips for next year because that is a great idea. <laughs> And so to clarify, the volunteers do help bring things up to the rooms and not just unload from the car onto the tables, right? Yeah, volunteers will typically help bring things up to the room. It's really, they will kind of follow your lead. If you're like, I'm good, I don't need any help, they will just get you unloaded and moving in the right direction, but they typically will um, assist in getting th everything up to the room unloaded and then they will come back down. All right. Are they allowed to hang TVs on the wall? We do not recommend hanging TVs on the wall from a um, 
that is just a large amount of screws, a large amount of those pieces. So we do not recommend students hanging TVs on the wall. Um, yes, we do not re recommend. Uh, I'm seeing some comments that say yes on the free laundry, things like that. And I've never felt more popular than when I've been able to say that a couple of <laughs> times. So. Uh, um, so here's a question about it. It says, are TV hookups in each bedroom or in the common space or both? So that is a good question. Um, one of the pieces along with free laundry, and I should, I apologize. I should have mentioned this with free laundry. We um, are moving to streaming in the individual bedrooms. So we are working, um, there will not be cable in the individual bedrooms. We will still have cable in the common areas, but we are also working to provide a streaming service um, for students as well. So more information will be provided when we kind of do the formal rollout. Um, but we were already seeing that students were using streaming, they're using Netflix, they're using Hulu, all those other pieces. Um, they were not using our cable services that much. So um, we will be moving to streaming. We went through a large wireless upgrade in our residence halls last summer. So we have the capability to support all that streaming. Um, and again, you'll get some additional information about kind of streaming options um, when we send out an email to students about the free bend for laundry. All right, sounds good. So we've got a couple of questions asking about the room swap process. A couple of people have put in for room swap but haven't heard anything back and are just curious about the timeline. So we are continuing to work through the room swap process this week and then through part of next week. So we anticipate that the room swap process will be wrapped up by mid next week. Um, as you imagine, the room swap process is a little bit of kind of dominoes falling. So once we move someone, then we can move someone else. Um, so our housing assignments team is working on that pretty diligently um, last week and this week. So we will be communicating with anyone who completed a room swap um, mid next week, letting them know either we were able to accommodate or we were not able to accommodate. The other piece, we do a room swap period as well, a couple weeks after the semester begins. So that is something if maybe you did not get a room swap um, this summer, we do provide an additional opportunity for students to swap um, both in the fall semester and in the spring semester. So that will be an additional option. And your student can talk to their residence life staff about that um, if that is something they are interested in. Here's a good question. How long do you recommend that parents and families stay on campus on move-in day? I think that's really up to the individual parent and family. Um, if you're like my parents, you really just dropped me off and you left. Uh, and we're like, good luck. Um, and that was really, it's up to you. Um, we will see parents and families that stay kind of right up into or a little bit past that 8 p.m. Um, time. Um, you'll see parents who leave pretty quickly after they're unloaded. Um, it's really a conversation between you and your student. Um, I do think there is some, it's nice to kind of grab that dinner or grab that last meal. Um, but again, that's really going to be a personal piece um, for you to kind of work through with your student on what makes the most sense for you as a group. Um, and so that's what I would recommend. There's no hard recommendation. I know it is a hard, hard time to leave your child at school. And so I, recognize that that is really personal um, and is going to be kind of up to the individual group. Yeah, I think um, I would would echo that, that as well. Um, I think having the conversation when you're at home, when you're not, um, you know, in the process of, of moving in and being kind of stressed out and emotions are, are high for everyone, just asking your student what they would prefer, what they hope that day will look like. I think if you have any expectations about what you are hoping for that day, like if you're hoping to have a meal together or um, if you're hoping that, you know, they'll let you take some pictures, you know, outside the halls and things like that. Um, I would just make sure you share your expectations, ask a lot of questions about them so you can, um, in a time when folks aren't as emotional, put it all out there and then come up with a, a plan for the day. Um, but I agree that it does, it's personal to each student and to each family. Yeah. I would also um, encourage you just to make sure that you want to make sure that your needs are taken care of, but you also want to make sure that you're not hanging on so, so long that they're not connecting with their roommate or not fully participating in their living learning program activities or certainly K-Week activities. Um, we want them to start building those connections on campus as soon as possible. All right. Again, for as many questions as we've answered, there are more coming in. So we're going to do our best with our last 10 minutes to get as many as we can. So some of the ones that we haven't addressed yet are a little bit more, um, uh, some of them are unrelated exactly to 
to housing. So I'll quickly mention like one is about when students should purchase textbooks. This is a question that came up a lot over the summer in the What I Wish My Family Knew student panel. I heard the first year experience ambassadors say repeatedly that they would wait to purchase textbooks until after the first day of class. Um, so that's sharing on their behalf what, what I heard them saying there. So again, there's more questions about kind of the dimensions of different things mm -hmm. in the rooms and if, you know, small counter ice machines are okay for all of these questions, you know, are hanging lights allowed? I'm seeing those. For all of those questions, where do you recommend that they find more information? I would say go to the what to bring or what not to bring document that's on our Wildcat Living website. Um, and again, every year there's something new that gets popped up that pops the ice machine. I'm like, I don't know if we've gotten that question um, of whether there's like a, a countertop ice machine allowed. And so we recommend that you email UK housing at uky.edu and then we'll work with the fire marshal. Again, there's something every year that pops up that is a new question. Um, and we will defer to the fire marshal to make that determination of whether that is allowed or not. Um, but those documents are going to be really critical for review. And again, just email us and we'll work to see what is allowed and what is not allowed um, for you as well and happy to do so. So here's a question. Mobilized scooters are not allowed in the residence halls, but are allowed on campus. So where can students charge them? Are there chargers near the outdoor bike parking spots? Anything that you would share there? I believe there are a small number of chargers. That is um, going to be a good question for UK Transportation Services. I know that is something that they have been thinking about um, as scooters have become more popular on campus. Um, and so they are, uh, will have more information about where students can charge those scooters um, moving forward. I know that is a project that they have been working on for the past couple of years as those have become more popular on campus. Yeah, so that'll be a good question for our uh, Catch Out Live with them on the 22nd. Um, since there's limited space in the room, can you use the common areas in the um, residence halls to put furniture together during move and if needed? Um, I think that is generally, um, yes, that is allowed. Um, you will just want to kind of be mindful that you're not in the middle of a hallway um, as we're trying to get those carts around. But there is plenty of lobby space and other pieces. Um, but there's also um, in many of our rooms, common areas in there um, or our four, four person suites um, have some a decent amount of size kind of in the middle of the room to build furniture. Um, so if you're unable to build it in your room um, or in the common areas in your room, there are some spaces we would just ask that you're not building furniture in the middle of the hallway, um, mainly from a life safety that we need egress, but also um, respectful of other people that are moving in. Um, and that comes with um, when you move out or when you move in, you will also notice trash and recycling. We will have um, basically uh, staff members around um, and dumps, additional dumpsters throughout the move-in process. One dumpster specifically for cardboard and styrofoam, um, as well as one dumpster for trash. And so um, we do ask that instead of putting that out in the hallway or whatever, that you are taking that down to the various locations. And the RAs will be able to tell you that, um, as well as the volunteers. And again, we'll have folks outside who will be able to help guide you to where that is. So speaking of trash and recycling, do um, the students have garbage and recycling cans provided in their rooms, or is that something they need to bring on their own? Um, they have, we recommend bringing garbage cans. There are recycling cans um, in each individual room, um, but we do recommend bringing a garbage can. So got a couple questions about Wi-Fi. Do students need ethernet cables or is Wi-Fi reliable? Do they only use Wi-Fi for all of their needs? Um, so if you could speak a little bit to that, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, we do have Ethernet ports that are available in the residence halls. They are live and working. We see a small number of our students actually use those Ethernet ports. Um, the Wi-Fi is really reliable. So again, we did a pretty extensive upgrade in the summer of 2023 um, to our Wi-Fi network across all of our residence halls. And so um, we saw very limited issues this academic year uh, with Wi-Fi in the residence halls. And so it is pretty consistent. It is pretty reliable. But again, um, it never hurts to bring an Ethernet cord because we do have those ports that are um, available in the residence halls. Um, and we do, again, still see students that are using them pretty consistently. Helpful. 
Do the bathrooms get cleaned regularly or is that entirely up to the students? That is entirely up to the students. So um, uh, everything will be clean when you move in. Um, and so we will do extensive cleaning. We have been doing extensive cleaning throughout the summer. We will do another round um, prior to move in. Um, but our custodial staff do not clean those private bathrooms. Um, and so that is something when your student is talking to their roommates, uh, oftentimes that's a conversation that we will have during the roommate agreement process in terms of cleanliness, how often we want to clean the bathrooms, so on and so forth. So students are responsible to do that uh, throughout the academic year. Ooh, so they've got about, I mean, moving is a month away or so. I feel like this is a good time for you to tell your student that they can practice and you can uh, get them to clean your bathrooms at home because you're just trying to help them figure out how to live on their own in the residence halls this fall. Hey, if you can get them to clean your bathroom, so much the better. Then bathrooms and laundry. If they don't know how to do laundry, please teach them how to do laundry. Yeah, for sure. Do you see any um, issues with laundry in the residence halls, things where students weren't, weren't prepared to do it on their own? We do. Typically, at the beginning of the year, we will see um, maybe putting too much detergent in. Um, we really recommend those pods, uh, although we have had students that have put in multiple pods for one load of laundry. Um, and then we do see some students that will overload our dryers. Um, and so we're hoping with free vent, they don't feel the need to get everything into one load, um, that they can do it in multiple loads. Um, but we do see that. So I think those are some big pieces of just making sure that we're putting in the correct amount of detergent, um, but also not stuffing everything we own into the dryer if possible. Yeah. There was a question about could comforters fit in the, um, washing, washing machines in the halls. They, uh, we do not recommend putting those in the dryer. And then, yeah, here's a, a question. I've seen, I feel like I've heard um, multiple takes on the pods that some people say that they're great because you don't have to measure them, but then other people saying that they don't, um, you know, kind of disintegrate all the way. And so, yeah, the last question came in, is the water pressure sufficient to dissolve the, the pods? These are some good questions. Um, our laundry vendor recommends the pods. Um, so the individuals that kind of work on our laundry machines, particularly our washers day in and day out, water pressure is fine. We have not seen any issues with pods, um, not completely dissolving. So, um, but I will double check that with our laundry vendor and also provide that information out, um, to you all as well. So here's a logistics question, getting back to the move in day. It says we may run out to the store during the day for some essentials we're choosing not to pack from home. Um, how do you do that uh, for unloading? Do you have to wait until after the move-in appointments are done for the day to get back in the line? You don't. So you can come back into the line at any point. Um, we will see that particularly in the afternoons. We will start to see people who have done a Target run or a Kroger run that will come back in. Again, we're just going to ask that you are um, probably dropping off those items as quickly as possible and then moving your car again. Um, but we will see fam parents and families come back through after doing kind of an initial run um, to whatever store they might be. So you're still allowed to come back through, um, but we just ask that you're making sure that you're getting that car to where it needs to go pretty quickly so that we can get everyone moved in. I know we're getting close on time. We'll try to squeeze in a couple more questions. So you mentioned that there are kitchens in the residence halls. There's been some questions about what's available to the students in those kitchens. Mm -hmm. So um, it is a full kitchen. So there is um, stoves, ovens, all of those pieces. Um, typically, each residence hall front desk will have kitchen items for students to check out. So they will have pots, pans, cooking utensils, all of those pieces. We also will see students that will bring their own set of pots and pans if that is what they choose to do. Um, and if they anticipate that they would like to be use, utilizing those kitchens a little bit more. Um, but we will have cooking utensils, everything you need um, down at the front desk for you to check out. Um, but again, you can also bring, bring your own items as well. And then this question falls along with the, the kitchen question. With food in the dorms, have there been issues in the past with ants or any other unwanted friends? There have not. Um, our, I will say our custodial staff do a really good job of cleaning the kitchens uh, every day. So they will be kind of monitoring what is in the fridge, what needs to get thrown away. 
Um, if food is left out in the kitchen, uh, they will typically take care of it. Um, so our custodial teams do a great job of keeping those common areas good to go um, and making sure that food and all those pieces are taken care of and disposed of properly. All right. Um, so, and to clarify, the hall staff or the janitorial staff is there for those common areas. The um, there are common bathrooms in the the halls as well. There was a question about what do you do if your roommate's in the bathroom and you need it. There are common bathrooms uh, in the residence halls as well. So there is generally um, at least two, if not more, in the each residence hall. So again, the, and the custodial staff will clean those common bathrooms daily. Um, so they are really doing all of the common spaces throughout the residence hall on a daily basis. And are vacuum cleaners available for use or do um, students need to bring their own? Um, I would recommend students bring their own. There are occasionally vacuums at the front desk. It is not consistent at all the residence halls because um, honestly, sometimes those vacuums get beat up pretty quickly. Um, so we do recommend that students bring their own vacuum. Um, and there is, a, again, occasionally a vacuum available at the front desk, but that is not consistent at all of the halls. All right. And again, for figuring out where, um, which floors have the laundry in the kitchen and all that, you recommend a, a walkthrough on move-in day? Yep. yep. Yeah. And again, talk to your RA. Your RA um, will probably start sending out information to your student within the next couple of weeks. So I would also, typically that is also included in the individual kind of hall information that they will provide as well. So again, I think there's some questions that with the time that we have, we're not going to get to, but a lot of them are particular to, you know, should I hang shower curtains with um, rods or rings? Um, are there exhaust fans in the bathroom? Can we have the mini ice makers, that kind of thing? So where do you recommend that they get questions to some of those kind of more um, in the the weeds kind of questions for each hall? Um, there are, well... I'm assuming we're talking about shower curtains for the actual bathroom. Um, there are shower curtains provided. Um, students can also bring their own, but there is a rod already hanging up in the bathroom. Um, for kind of these specific questions, I'd recommend, again, emailing ukhousing at uky.edu. Um, I know the housing assignments team, I was talking to them last week, they're getting a lot of kind of specific questions about measurements and some of those pieces. And so they're doing their best to answer all of those. But that is who I would ref. Um, recommend reaching out to, and we will get um, that information to the correct individuals, whether that be the fire marshal um, or um, we will work to get you some of those measurements as well. All right. Well, uh, this felt like, um, you know, putting Lisa <laughs> on uh uh, notice, like, do you know every single thing about every single hall? But you did a great job answering all the questions and walking folks through the move-in process. And um, for those of you whose questions we didn't get to live, apologies. They were, were coming in fast and furious, and we love um, all of the enthusiasm. So if we didn't get to your question, please do use the contact information on the screen to reach out to, to housing and residence life. And certainly anytime you email parents at uky.edu, we start connecting with our wonderful campus partners to get you the information you need. So um, keep those questions coming, even if we didn't have time for them live, and we'll make sure you get the information you need. So we hope to see many of you on Wednesday at noon Eastern time for a conversation with UK Dining. They'll be walking through meal plans and um, particular dietary and, and allergy needs and all of that good stuff. And so you can register for that through the Cat Chat family community. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, we'll be taking today's recording and putting it in the Cat Chat family community either later this afternoon or tomorrow morning so that you can go back and view anything you may have missed or you can share it with others who may be interested. But Lisa, thank you so much for sharing all of this great information um, with everybody. Ashley, thanks for being behind the scenes, answering a few questions as well. Families, thank you so much for joining us. We hope this was helpful and we hope to see you again soon for another Cat Chat Live. Thanks so much.